What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to take a look at Laravel Prompts. Prompts enhances your CLI experience by bringing the interactive forms you're used to using on the web into your command line. It's another product that was launched at Laracon US by Jess Archer, so make sure to check out her talk if you haven't already done so. Links below as always. So even if you don't make custom command line applications, you can still benefit from this library because it's built right into the Laravel installer and also the artisan commands. For the Laravel installer, make sure you have the latest version at version 5. And for the artisan commands, that should be built into the latest version of Laravel. So let's make use of the Laravel installer to see some of the new prompts here. So let's say Laravel new. And in previous versions, if you didn't provide the project name, then you would get an error. But now it will prompt you for information like the project name, if you want starter kits, if you want pest, and so on. So again, that's really nice because oftentimes I forget to provide those options and then I have to recreate the application. But now just do Laravel new and you will be prompted with all of this information. So for the project name, let's say Laravel prompts example. Let's hit enter here. Now it's asking for a starter kit. You can move around with the arrow keys. For Vim users, you can make use of HJKL. So let's select Breeze here. It's asking what stack you want. Let's stick with Blade. Dark mode, why not? And let's do pest here. And sure, we'll initialize a Git repo. And you can see it's now installing the Laravel application with all of those options. Okay, that's done. Let's go into that project. So Laravel prompts example. And let's take a look at some of the artisan commands here. Now, all of the options you're used to using still work, but you can also make use of these prompts as well. So for example, if I wanted to make a new model, we can say PHP artisan make model and again before if you didn't provide the model name then you would get an error but now it will prompt you for it and you can see we have this nice placeholder text to give you an example of what the naming convention should be and this would be more useful in other things like events or controllers so let's make an order model here and you can see we have this multi-select which allows us to add any of the following here so if you were to do this before you would have to memorize all of the options which i never did I usually just pass dash A to give me everything, even though I didn't make use of everything. But now we have this multi-select, we can just hit space and select what we want. So say factory, cedar, requests, migration, policy, and that's good. Let's press enter here. And you can see it created everything we selected. Let's take a look at another command here. How about a controller? Again, if you don't pass the controller name, it will ask you for it. Oh, and another nice option here. Let me just cancel out of this so you can see the nice canceled state, which is a small detail, but makes for a really nice user experience. You can see we have the word canceled and there's a line through user controller, which indicates it was not created. So let's run that again. Again, we have a placeholder so you can see the naming convention. So let's say user controller. We have the different options for controllers, which is nice. Let's select a resource controller. And you can see we have this optional drop down here where you can associate a model to this controller. So it lists all of the models in your application and you can go ahead and select that, which is really nice. And that created our controller for us. How about PHP artisan test, make test. Again, we have our naming convention, user test. Since we have pest installed, we have the option to create a pest test. And that created it for us. One last thing here, say PHP Artisan Vendor Publish. Now, if you have several packages installed, this list can get quite large. But you can see here, we have the ability to scroll. So it doesn't take up your entire screen, which is super nice. Let me just cancel out of that. So yeah, most of the Artisan commands you're used to using are now making use of prompts for a better experience. Now, if you do plan to make custom Artisan commands or a custom CLI, you can make use of all of these prompts yourself. So let's take a look at that. Let me go into VS Code here and I'll just do everything in Routes Console. And everything from before still works, but now we can make use of these prompts as well. Let's start off by just using the old commands here. Let me just go down here. Let's duplicate this. Let's make a new command called greet or we'll name it greet old. And this will take a parameter that's optional called name. So name question mark is how you would do it. And we can take in that name here. So let's say string name and it's defaulted to null. And how about we say this info 
and we'll just output the name here. So let's say hello, comma, name. Okay. And how about if they don't pass in a name, we can ask for input. Again, this is just doing it without prompts. So let's say if not name. So if they don't pass in a name, we can ask for it like this. So this ask, what is your name? Okay. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's run this. It's PHP artisan greet old. And if I don't pass a param, you can see it does ask for your name. And I forgot to save that to a variable so name. Okay. Try that again. Ask for my name. And we do get our greeting. But now let's go ahead and make use of prompts here. Let's see if we can work split screen here. And let me just verify this command works with an argument as well. And it does. Okay, let's go ahead and make use of prompts here. So let me duplicate this one. Let's say greet. And we don't need this purpose. I believe this gives the description when you say PHP artisan, but let's just leave it as blank. Okay. So if you take a look at the docs here, they have really good examples of all the available prompts. So we have all of these here. So I'm just basically going to copy and paste these so you can see them in action. So let's start with text. So obviously we are using Laravel here, so we don't need to compose or require it, but this package does work in non Laravel projects. Let's start with text here. So pretty straightforward. We have to import the function text and make use of it like this. So instead of ask, we can say text. And unfortunately, VS Code won't auto import it like you're used to, because it's actually a function, which you don't see that often within the framework. So you can see it says the class is not found. So we have to do it manually. So let me grab this. Let's import that up here. It might be an option, but I don't have that set up. You can see it's using a function here. And if I just go into that, you can see the implementation here for all of the prompts. Okay. Go ahead and save that. And now let's see if this works. So we have greet. Let's not provide the input. And let's see if we get that new prompt. And we do. Okay, let me say my name here. And we get the same output. Let me just clear that. There are other options here. You can see it's making use of named parameters. So we can say placeholder. We can give it a default value. We can make it required, just like a standard input type equals text in a web form. So let's grab all of this, let's put it in here, save that, say the default is my name. Let's take a look at the other options here. We can make it required and you can also pass a custom message here. So let's do that. So let's add required, your name is required. What else do we have here? We have validation. So if you want custom validation rules, you can make use of this validate option, which takes in a function. And in the example, they're making use of the match expression. So for this case, return this error. For this case, return this error. And if you return null, then that means there's no error. So let's go ahead and grab this and paste it into our code right here. Okay, save that. And let's give that a try. Let's run that again. You can see the default is Andre. We do have a placeholder. So if I try to press enter here, we do get the required validation message. And let's try our custom validation. So it has to be more than three. You can see as I type, the validation message does update, which is really nice. And if I keep typing, it does go away. Awesome. And again, I forgot to assign this to a name variable. Save that, try that one more time. And that does work. Okay, what else do we have here? You can have multiple prompts here. So let me show you the next prompt we have, which is password, I believe. And password is pretty much the same as text, except it masks the input. So let's go ahead and import password here. And we can copy this and change it to password. And now we should have two prompts, one for name and one for password. And I'm going to get rid of this parameter, you definitely should have this to provide a fallback if the user does not want to use prompts. But for this demo, I will remove it. Let's remove this curly brace. Let's save that. 
we don't need this input anymore or this param and we don't need this okay that should still work so let's do the same for password here again same thing but now we have this password masked input just like you would see in a web form password equals password label what is your password placeholder enter your password i believe there's no default option required your password is required and say password here okay let's make sure to output our password as well password colon password okay let's see if this works why is this squiggly did i import that i think i removed it because i wasn't using it when i saved it so let's import that again save and now squiggly is gone let's try this out andre and now it prompts for the password so again we have the same options but we have this masked or these masked characters as you type which is nice okay what else do we have here we have a confirm input so let's take a look at how we can use that let's grab this one here and again we have to import that it's called confirm let's go back to our command down here and i'm just going to comment these out so we don't have multiple prompts so let's comment this and i guess these as well and we'll just add it below here so let's paste that in do you accept the terms and how about we just die and dump confirmed here and this should be a boolean so default false we'll make sure no is selected by default you can set that to true if you like so let's try that out you can see no is selected by default so if i hit no should be false if i hit yes should be true now there should be options to force yes so you can also specify custom text for yes or no and here's requiring yes so we just say required true or just like before you can provide a custom message here so let's paste that in here or for now the yes and the no and let's also say custom required message save that try that again so now if i hit decline you can see we get this error message until we accept it Okay, let's take a look at a select input, which is equivalent to a select input on a web form. So a drop down or maybe even a radio button. So the user can only select one option. So let's grab this here. Actually, we'll grab this one down here. So we have a label and we have options here. And if you use an associative array, then this is what your code will use, but this is what the user will see in the prompt. So let's go ahead and grab this role. Make sure to import select. So again, I'll just comment this out. Let's paste that in. Let me import select up here. Okay. Let's save that. So we have three options. It's going to default to owner here and it's dined up that as well. Save that. Let's run it again. You can see it defaults to owner. And we can select anything we want here. And you can see it's dumping the key here, but it's showing member with an uppercase M. So here. We also have the option to scroll, which you saw earlier when I did vendor publish. So you can just provide this scroll option and it says five is the default, but you can change that with this option. So let's say scroll, let's say three, but we have to add more options here. So I'll just do that. Okay, so I added more options. Let's try that again. And you can see we do have the scroll bar here. So we can scroll down. And if we hit down on the last one, it will scroll back to the top. And just like our other prompts, we can have validation as well. So let's take a look at this example here. Let's paste that into our code. I'll put it right here. Let's add our comma here. Save. And we'll get rid of this here. So if we select owner, we should get this error message. So let me save that. Let's try that again. And I'm going to select owner here and we do get that error message. 
Next, we have a multi-select. So this will be the equivalent of checkboxes in your web form. Again, pretty straightforward. Take a look at the example they have here. Let's copy this one. So same deal as a single select. These are the options. And these are the ones that are selected by default. Let's make sure to import multi-select as well. Let's go back to our code. Let's comment this out, let's paste that in. Let's die and dump permissions. Let's make sure to import multi-select up here. Okay, save that. Let's try that here. And I have a syntax error. Forgot a semicolon. Let's try again. You can see read and create are selected by default here, but I can scroll down, hit space to deselect and press enter. And we should get an array of permissions here. So in this case, all of them. Cool. Again, we have the scroll option, which I won't show you since it's the same thing. And you can also say required true if you want the user to select at least one option. And of course we have validation as well, which again is the same as the others. Let's move on to suggest here, which is like a text input, but it has suggestions, which you don't have to follow. So let's take a look at this. We'll grab this. Actually, let's grab this one down here, which has a placeholder as well. So we'll grab this one. And again, we have the same options as before, like required and validation, which I won't show you. Let's just check out this demo here. Okay, let's comment this out. Let's paste this in. Let's make sure to import suggest. Let's change the default to my name. Actually, I won't have a default here, just so you can see the suggestions that come up. So let me save this. Let's make sure to import suggest up here. Suggest. And let's give that a try. So I can press down here and you'll see the suggestions that we have in our code. If I hit enter, it will populate our input and I didn't die and dump it, but that should work. And again, you don't have to enter any of the suggestions if you don't want to. Okay. And the last prompt we have here is search. So similar to suggest. So let's take a look at how this works. So we'll grab this example here. So we have a label, a placeholder, and we have options here. And you can see these options are using Eloquent to query the database and updating the results as the user types. So just like an autocomplete in a web form. So again, we have options for scrolling as well and validation, but I'll just show you this example here. So let's grab this. I have to make sure my database is in place. So let me put this in the code first. So let's comment this out. This should have had the die and dump name. So let me just add that and then we'll comment it out. And we'll add this search. Let's make sure to import user. Let's import search as well. So up here, search. Okay. And so again, as the user types, it should perform this query here and return any results here. And you can see we're only interested in the name and the ID. So this should be an array with the key of an ID and the value as a name. So let me save this. I believe I do have a database set up already. So let me just update this. Let's save this. Let's go into database cedar. So we have some data in here. Let's uncomment this. We should create 10 users. Let me say 50 here. Save that and let me migrate fresh seed, which is an alias I have, and that does work. So we have users in our database now, and hopefully our command should work. So as I start to type, you can see it is querying our database here and showing the results. And I think I forgot to die and dump the name again, or the ID in this case. So let's go ahead and die and dump the ID. Let's run that again. So let me cancel this, run it again look for someone. And when I hit enter, that should be their user ID. And it is cool. So yeah, that is a look at using Laravel prompts for your CLI applications. It's definitely something I'll be making use of all the time, whether it's making custom artisan commands, or just making use of the existing artisan commands when making new models or controllers. 
So yeah, be sure to check out Laravel Prompts.